The story of human flight is a long, complex history. From the dawn of civilization to the modern world, it has transformed over the centuries from wings glued on with wax to multi-million dollar planes, which have overwhelmingly taken over the world as our number one mode of transport. First off, if you didn't know what a plane is, let me briefly explain it. A plane, which is shorthand for airplane, is a mode of transportation that uses the force of lift, which is produced by the wings, to fly. Powered flight first occurred on December 17, 1903. This flight was conducted by the Wright brothers in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, and it changed the world forever. The script was written by Modern Aviation Stats and edited by someone whose name would rather not be put in it, but who has given me some photos in the past. Uh, joining me with guest recording is Ezra Ratner, and I am also recording Modern Aviation Stats, of course. And, yes. The most modern generation of planes are made out of metal and, and carbon composite, along with a host of other materials like wire and cloth for the seats, unlike the old, almost purely aircraft aluminium skinned planes. Today, we will be looking at a, le a very legendary aircraft, straight from the golden age of aviation. The Douglas DC-3 was, and still is, one of the most widely produced aircraft of all time. This aircraft first flew on December 17, 1935. Over 400 planes across all variants of the DC-3 are still fi flying today, over 75 years later. Over 10,000 units across all models and variants were originally made. 10,000 units in nine years is a lot because few other airliners that have made it that far and produced planes did it for the most part over 30 years or more. Due to lack of usable photos on this aircraft, the the next photos will be of aircraft that are not DC-3s that have been taken in plane spotting in the past. The DC-3 was made into a vast number of variants and models, including, but not limited to, the C-47 for the U.S. Army and the Dakota for the Royal Air Force. The aircraft was widely loved by pilots because it combined easy handling and smooth flying. Our story begins in 1934, when C.R. Smith, who was the president of the American Airlines uh, at the time, requested two new different kinds of planes. Both planes were stretched versions of the older Douglas DC-2. The first aircraft could have doubled the seat to the DC-2, but the second air new aircraft would contain beds for sleeping, like in a typical sleeper train car. This plane was to be used on trips that lasted overnight. Like the trains, the first type made was the DC-3 with the beds. It was officially known as the Douglas Sleeper Transport, although the airlines called them sky sleepers. At the time, the DC-3 was the height of comfort. It had 14 plush seats, which folded into seven beds, with the additional seven beds folding down from overhead. These were contained within four main compartments. The planes used for daytime flights contained between 21 and 28 seats, which is a measurable link, which is a lot more seats than the sleeper trip for, which again is double compared to the 14 seats of the DC-2. The seats between the DC-2 and the sleeper transport were the same amount. The first Douglas sleeper transport was delivered to American Airlines in June 1936. The first normal passenger aircraft arrived two months later, with the standard 21 seats. In November of that same year, United Airlines, who before 1934 was a subsidiary of Boeing, became the second customer for the DC-3. This was because the DC-2 was more economical to operate than the Boeing Model 247, produced by William Boeing's company. Thought of the DC-3 got United to order it because they thought it would dominate the aircraft industry like the DC-2 before it. After the two airlines ordered the DC-3, 
Over 30 airlines also ordered the aircraft type from across the world in the following two years. Along with those 30 plus airlines, the Allied powers in World War II used the DC-3 variant, the C-47 Skytrain. The DC-3 helped to make the aviation industry profitable to airlines. The same C.R. Smith from American Airlines also commented that the DC-3 was the first aircraft to be able to make money purely by just transporting passengers, and not both cargo and passengers. In current time, most airlines do carry both passengers and cargo to increase revenue. Nowadays, it is widely accepted to be the first profitable only passenger aircraft. By 1939, over 90% of flying Americans are flying on either DC-2s or DC-3s. A total of 455 planes designated as DC-3s are produced, but models produced in Russia and Asia, licensed of course, were also produced, and that is not counted in this number. The production line closed in 1945. Next, let's look at how the DC-3 is used today, in the modern age. The aircraft is still profitable to many, if not all, its operators. The DC-3 is commonly used for, but not limited to, carrying skydivers, cargo service, and military transports. The DC-3 is also used on gravel or dirt runways because its rugged and sturdy frame can hold up well with rough runways. After all, a lot of enthusiasts and pilots say that the only type of aircraft that can replace a DC-3 is another DC-3. Some additional factors that have prolonged the life of the aircraft are its ease of maintenance and its ability to take off on short runways. The development put into the DC-3 was amazing and included technological advancements such as a new 1,200 horsepower engines and retractable sturdy landing gear. The DC-3 was so widespread that by the mid-1940s, all but 25 of all the aircraft that were operating commercially in the United States were DC-3s. Now, we will focus on the DC-3's record-breaking. The DC-3 was the quickest plane of its time to cross America. This flight happened in 1938. The flight began before sunset. A DC-3 took off from Newark, New Jersey. As recounted by a Fortune magazine reporter on the flight at the time, half along the runway, she left the ground so smoothly that none of the first flyers in the cabin realized what happened until they saw the whole field rushing away behind them and the factory lights winking through the Jersey market head. Unfortunately, the reporter's name is not stated. After crossing over the Virginia state line, the passengers had finished their dinners. Dinner included soup, lamb chops, vegetables, salad, ice cream, and coffee. After their only main stopover to refuel in Nashville, Tennessee, the same fortune reporter then went on to add that. Visibility was limited only by the far horizons of the curving earth. Even with headwinds, the DC-3 succeeded in arriving in 18 hours and 40 minutes at the intended arrival time of 8.50 a.m. in Glendale, California. This beat the preceding time from 1934 of 25 hours by 6 hours and 20 minutes. In 1940 alone, over 2 million Americans traveled through the sky. The air travel prices decreased from costing an average of 5.7 cents per mile to just 0.5 cents per mile in 1940. A round trip by air cost about $300 at the time, or or $4,918 today, which is a lot of money. The aircraft's military uses were vast, where in its peak year, over 5,000 C-47s were made, which is half of all the DC-3s and variants produced. The Air Force had had experimented with using DC-2s for military use. The C-47 was ordered in 1939. The C-53 went into production in October 1941, and 200 were made. 
Although the normal variant enter of the C-47 entered production in January 1942. By the year 1941, the U.S. Air Force had chosen to use a modified DC-3 to be designated as the th- C-47 Skytrain to transport troops and cargo. The only large difference between the two is the addition of a large cargo door and reinforced floors. C-47 also included glider towing hooks. The C-47 was then given at least 22 separate designations uh, per for different countries, and the plane came in seven main models. The designations included the AC-47D gunship and the C-53 Skytrooper. Some common jobs for the C-47 was the ability to either carry 6,000 pounds of cargo, a fully built 37mm gun, or an army jeep. Although the C-47 usually carried up to 5,000 pounds, but if it had to, the C-47 could carry 7,000 pounds. For troop movement, it could carry up to 28 fully armed soldiers. Astonishingly, all of the branches of the U.S. Army flew the plane at some point, along with, some, along with most of their allies. The British, and some parts of the Commonwealth, as I said before, had a nickname for the C-47 being Dakota. They called the plane the Douglas Aircraft Company Transport Aircraft, or DACTA, which is quickly made into Dakota. The aircraft originally flew on December 23, 1941, right before the holidays. The aircraft, at one time or another, has operated within or from every single continent in the world throughout its history. The C-47 operated in every major battle in World War II since its inception. The C-47 was the backbone of the Berlin Airlift in 1948. The C-47 came to be widely known as the Goonie Bird. With its more powerful engines, the C-47 could tow up to two CG wacko gliders, or one horse glider. As well as shuttling troops into combat, the plane also carried people to, around, and from the front lines. The C-47 often flew in groups of up to 50 planes when operating in missions. The plane flew in multiple different formations depending on the mission. The crew of the types of planes vary, but in commercial DC-3, there were usually two pilots and one flight attendant. As we have conveyed, the DC-3 is a, is a very interesting and important aircraft. The DC-3's cost efficiency was one of the reasons that many people started to fly. Thank you so much for watching. For watching. All of the sources used for this mini-documentary will be in the description below and on the screen now.